I got a problem here. <laughs> and uh, they didn't have an answer to give me. So they kind of sat on it for about two or three weeks. And I continued to go to the meetings. And they got more and more uncomfortable because they knew the research that I had. And I was commenting as usual in the meetings until finally the elder pulled me aside one night. And it was only two or three weeks. And he said, you have to decide if you're going to be a Jehovah's Witness. No sitting on the fence between, you know, I was going to my church and going to theirs. He says, you have to decide. And I says, and, and believe what I know is false? I mean, can I be a Jehovah's Witness and not believe this one thing? He says, no, you have to believe everything. And he says, I do not want you to come back here until you're willing to accept everything Jehovah's Witnesses believe without question. And I'm not kidding. These are his words. I'm like, I'm like, okay. So I went home that night, and I'm like, God, did I do everything you wanted me to do here? Or was there something else you wanted me to share? I didn't even get to the gospel. I just, you know, this was just research on their book that we were studying. And I'm like, well, I learned a lot in that time. I got to see how, you know, what it's like to live as a Jehovah's Witness. But, but I really wanted to share the gospel. So I asked the Lord. And I ran across an old tape of Arnold Hoffman. And I believe he spoke here when Bill was around. California. Oh, out in California. See, I don't even know because it was before my time. But I, I had an old tape of his. And he gave some questions to ask to present the gospel with them. And I went and took those questions. And I'm going to present to you what happened. And, and God gave me a scripture right about this same time about appealing to their conscience. And I woke up with this the next morning after I'd been praying and I had that whole thing happen at the Kingdom Hall. 2 Corinthians 4, 1 through 2. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced the hidden things because of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor adulterating the word of God, but by manifesting the truth commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. And that's exactly what happened. I got a chance to appeal to their conscience. And so I went back the following week and presented these five questions to them. And you wonder, how did I get in past the front door with that elder telling me I don't dare come back and ask any more questions? I came late. <laughs> and sat way in the back. Well, the elder was conducting the study. He couldn't question me then. So that worked. All right, I'll sit in the back. And I raised my hands, but I was in the back. And nobody knew I was in the back. And nobody knew I had my hands to comment like usual. And everybody seemed to like my comments. At least that was my impression. And so nobody could say to the elder, why aren't you asking her comments? But he did not let me comment at all that whole night. Well, then, afterward, he courted me. Okay, you know, are you willing to believe everything Jehovah's Witnesses believe? Why are you here? And I says, I've got a question for you. I said, everything hinges on how to be saved, how to have Jehovah's approval, and how to have eternal life. And I said, this is the only thing that really matters, and I really need to know, what do you believe you have to do to be saved, to have the eternal life? And I says, I need to talk to you and, and your wife afterward. And he says, okay. Well, after everybody leaves, we'll talk. So he stayed around with him and his wife afterward, and I got to go through these five questions. And it was really incredible what God did. We went through the first question, what did Jesus Christ do for you on the tree? And I, we looked at 1 Peter 2.24, and he himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree. And I asked them, what did Jesus Christ bear in his body? What was it? Was it just Adamic sin nature? Or was it our personal sins? It was our personal sins. And, and, and we, we kind of went around on that a little bit because they were kind of hemming and hawing about Adamic sin nature and, and not the personal sins part. And so we talked about that. We used, I used the illustration that Arnold Hoffman gives in his talk about Jesus dying on a tree. And you see the personal sins. You draw a picture of, of the dots of the, those personal sins being transferred to his body and burying them in his body. And it was kind of an amazing picture for the elder and his wife because they had never considered that. At least that was the impression. The idea of Jesus paying in his body for their sins. And, um, and one of the things that I also shared was the Ezekiel 8.4. When we talked about what caused the death of Jesus, 
on the tree. Ezekiel 8, 18.4 says the soul who sins will die. So it's personal sins that causes our death. We're under double condemnation of death due to Adamic sin and due to our own personal sins. And so we talked about that. And uh, Arnold Hoffman also gives the illustration of a traffic ticket. And I love this. I use this illustration to anybody, not just Jehovah's Witnesses. When they think, well, don't our good works, aren't they going to pay for our bad works? And I say, well, think about it this way. You go before a judge. Say you ran a speeding light. And, uh, and you say, oh, judge, I'm really sorry. I'm doing the best I can. I've been a really good person, and I'm trying to obey all the rules, and I, I've never run that light before. Can you just let me off the hook? And, you know, everyone I've shared this with has said, well, no, I get it. The, the price of the ticket has to be paid. And that's the whole point. Jesus paid our ticket for our sins so that we can go free. And once that sin is paid, there's nothing we have to do to pay to add on to it. Once that ticket's paid. And so he stands before Jehovah God the Father and says, I paid for that. She's mine or he's mine and I can go free. So we, we talked about that. And then I asked him, what did Jesus say we have to do in order to have our sins forgiven and to receive eternal life? And there's John 5, 39 and 40. You search the scriptures because you think that in them you will have eternal life. But the scriptures are what bear witness of me. And yet you do not come to me that you may have life. Jesus said, come to me. What does it mean to come to Jesus so that you can have life? Have you done that? Have you prayed and asked Jesus to give you eternal life? I tell you, when I asked the elder and his wife that question, you wouldn't be, you, you'd be amazed. They were just like, oh, are you saying we got to pray to Jesus? Immediately, are you going to pray to Jesus? Well, who did Jesus tell us to pray to? Well, one of their arguments, and they, just like Arnold Hoffman shared in his tape, it was almost identical to this. They came up with the John 14, 6, you know, we got to go through Jesus to get to the Father, and what did, what did Jesus have us do? He prayed our Father. So we don't pray to Jesus directly, we pray our Father. Well, how do you answer that? Well, one of the things is, uh, I talked about John 13, 10, where Jesus said to the disciples, you are already clean. Once you're adopted into God's family, you can come before God as father. But before that, you, before the adoption, he's not your father. He's Jehovah. That's why in the old covenant, they never referred to God in prayer under the official father term. That was new for a Jew. This is the change in God's arrangement. Before that, they were under the old covenant. And so they could not call God Father. They were not clean. But Jesus' disciples, because of spiritual adoption, could call God Father. And that's why he taught them to pray our Father and not our Jehovah. And, and then we go back. You know, what did Jesus say before he came to earth? I mean, when he was on earth, I, I, Jesus came to earth and people started praying to Jesus at that point. He said John, in John 14, 14, if you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. And I brought that verse up to the elder and his wife. And you know what happened? 